My brake warning light is on, and that happens when the brake fluid gets low, and that happens when the brake pads are really worn out. So I think it's time for a brake job. And all that screeching and squealing that you just heard, that's not a good thing either. So let's fix these brakes. All right, it is chilly and I really uh, think the lighting sucks, but I gotta get this brake job done. Hopefully today. Is the car unlocked? No, the car is locked AF. Let's see, we'll set the parking brake. Pop the trunky. Get out our jack stands. The lighting's a lot better on this side. You wanna start over here. Ooh. I ran over something the other day, like bumped into a curb, and I think my alignment's out of whack now. So. Maybe we can see what's going on there. Let's get another brick. Wow. I think the alignment's out of whack on every car I own. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put your key in your ignition. That way there, we can turn the wheels back and forth if we have to. Can't turn them yet because they're on the ground. Lower the window just in case I have to reach in. And let's jack it up. Let's go into the car for a second. Right there, that's your uh, your pinch weld on your rocker panel. And that's where the jack is gonna go. So, let's get that seated nice and good. Now you notice I got the jack facing perpendicular to the car. And that's so as the car goes up, the jack will move under the car. That's how it's designed. If you don't do it that way, then you could bend your pinch welds. See how the jack kind of moves forward a little bit. This is kind of a crappy little jack, but it's got the wheel off the uh, off the ground anyhow. I might want to get a better jack. Are we up high enough? Let's check. We need like half an inch to get that jack stand under the frame rail. All right, let me see if we get another half inch on this crappy jack. Yeah, it looks like we got it. 
Nope. All right. Now we can slowly let the jack down. That wasn't actually so slow. And I'm gonna jack it up on the other side. And then we'll get this wheel off. All right, I'll leave the jack there as sort of a layer of redundancy. Let's get the wheel off. What would you guys rather have, my shadow or the shadow of the tripod? I guess you'll take the tripod. All right, as you can see, these rotors are junk and the pads are junk in there, even though I'm not gonna bother showing you. These things are just garbage. So we are going to go turn the steering wheel and get access to this. All right, I have ascertained that this is a 14 mil, so let's see if we can get it to come off. Oh, that's not even tight. I mean, it was tight enough. <sighs> that one's a little tighter. I could easily pop this off with a uh, screwdriver, but we're gonna use the old snap-on pry bar. That's kind of gross in there. And let's look at these pads. What was I afraid of? We've got five more miles we can drive on that. See, on this side the squealer's not even touching, which probably need means I need a new uh, caliper, which I'm not gonna do today. Now I'll give this thing a little spritz. I wish brake cleaner was free. And now we are gonna use the old school C-clamp method of backing up the caliper. You wanna get it as close to the center of the piston as you can. And if it doesn't go back easily, uh, you might have a problem. This one looks like we're doing okay. And we should be perfectly adequate with that. I've hung the caliper up and out of the way with some wire. I don't want to replace that caliper because it's the original Toyota caliper, but we'll see how it goes. You can see that this is really crusty right there. And now we're going to get the caliper bracket off. These bolts are 17s and I bought the Ugga Dugga gun for a reason. So let's uh, let's get the socket on first. Wow. Best 350 bucks I ever spent. Of course now can't get it in here. Wow, that's great. All right, now that we're on my workbench, which is a milk crate with a piece of cardboard on it, let's take a more careful look at these. This, it's not these. Uh, I guess we can pop the slides out. 
see how they're doing. Oh, definitely kind of crusty. I don't want to uh, mess up the little rubber seals. These slides are ugly. All right, this is the part of the video where my neighbors are having their lawn cut. So uh, you're gonna hear a lawn mower in the background. But here's that slide and we're gonna wipe it down with some brake cleaner on a uh, paper towel. That looks way more better. <sighs> Do the same with the other one. This one on this side has a little clippy clipperson on it, and this one doesn't, so. Let's spritz a little brake clean inside here. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Shake it around, dump it out. All right, let's let, let that dry for a second. And during that second, I will apply some Napa, which absolutely sponsors this video. Eat your heart out, um, Eric. I'm just kidding. Napa not a sponsor. Yeah, get some of that. Get you some of that. Let me just rip off everyone else's YouTube slogans. Get you some of that. Hey guys. The project at hand is a break job, so let's get to work. Who else can I totally rip off? I'm gonna put these over the side so they don't get all this dirt on them. All right, I am part of the everyday carry move movement and this is the knife I carry every day. And here's the hardware that Rock Auto sent me. I mean, I paid them for it. It's about a hundred bucks for the whole kit. So let's see if we can find a match. My butt and your uh, butt. That one looks about right, doesn't it? All right, let's pop that off. Clean that up a little bit. It's not all rusty and crusty, believe it or not. I'm in upstate New York, but I'm not in like way upstate New York. So we don't have huge rust problems here. Let's see, is that seat right? Or should I really clean that out? Now I think that's seating correctly. And then this one goes in. We'll give that a spritz. And I guess that one goes there. All right. All right, things just got exciting. See, this one's a little stuck. So I had to get out a screwdriver. I know, crazy, huh? There's so much craziness in this brake job. A little spritz. And let's find the identical part number. Does that look the same to you? Looks the same to me. Ooh, she doesn't want to go in. Start with that side. Oh, there we go. It's perfect. All right, we're ready for insertion of our well-lubricated pins. Ooh, look at that. So smooth. Make sure the rubber booty catches on the lip of the pin. And that's ready for uh, reinsertion in the car. But first, I suppose we could try to install our brake pad ruse. Like I said, or maybe I didn't, you go to rockauto.com, 
and they'll send you pads, rotas, and hardware for like, I don't know, a hundred bucks. There's no real indication as to where these are supposed to go. So I'm going to try to match it up to the old ones. All right, check out this brake pad. That's pretty uh, toasted. So that's the outer brake pad, which goes on this side. Like this, I guess. Wait, no, like this. Is that how it goes? I mean, that's the caliper side, right? And this one has caliper mocks on it. See? So I guess... I guess I have no idea what I'm doing. I gotta go double check. Well, I just rechecked the orientation of these pads and I think the last guy may have installed them the wrong way. Because at least on the driver's side, the squealer is there. Or is it there? Hmm. Let me go check again. All right, without consulting the internet and just looking at the other side of the car, I think this is the brake pad we need right here. And This one can go right over here. Right? Maybe. That's stubborn as a mule. You know, people used to drive around with mules instead of cars. All right, I don't think I need to lube the hardware because if you look at this old hardware, that shit wasn't lubed. You know, I got so caught up in the excitement with the pads I forgot we got these shiny new rotors that I'll wipe down with brake cleaner. See how dirty that is from the factory? Wipe down the other side. And then I will Maybe we'll spray that a little bit. Perfect. I really don't think we need to get out a wire wheel or anything for this. It's nice and smooth. It's not really corroded or nothing. And there's your big fancy rotor. All right, I guess all we have to do now is install this piece of bracketry, which goes right about here. We got one of the bolts in. Other bolt. And I am going to tighten that to official factory specifications. With the, 
this ratchet right here. Uh, click. Now I guess we have to install these little pins in the uh, in the pads. I don't know. They came with the hardware. There's holes in the pads, so I'll do it. There, we're all pinned up. All right, we are so close to being done. We just take our little caliper and uh, installify it. Whoa. Then you put these little bolts in here. Where's the other one? There it is. Oh, I'm doing a lot of grunting. Now we've got to get the right socket. And these things, remember I said they weren't too tight? Well, that's exactly how we're gonna tighten them. Ugh, not too tight. And that finishes this side. So I guess now we'll just do all the same stuff on this side over here. That was unexpected. All right. These bolts are like tight for the first quarter turn. And then they're uh, good to come out. That didn't even need to be pried. This is really a lot of work. So maybe I should get new calipers at some point. We'll see. Maybe I should scrape some of this crust off of here. Good enough. All right, I'll get dug a gun to the rescue. This thing really is incredible. Welcome to how to not record a flat lay on video. Oh. That is crusty as all get out. That used to be a saying people used. Damn. Crazy. All right, let's uh do a little cleany cleaner son. Maybe a little 
down the pipe here. Shake it up. Hoo, hoo. And don't let nobody pick your bum. Shake it up. That's what the song says, right? Uh, don't you worry about two left feet. Oh, goodness. Look how crusty this one is. Let's see if we can clean that up a little bit with the scroogey. Yeah, this is pretty awful. I might go get a, a wire brush, clean that up a little bit more. Or maybe I'll just spray it. Same with the other one. Yeah, that's good. A little more cleaning. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. Probably about two and a half hours. Yeah, I really need a new pin here, but not much I can do about that today. Except go to Advanced Auto Parts and get a new pin, I guess. But we're gonna run what we brung. Did I clean out this? Oh, there's your pads. They just, they want to come off. These pads are tired. How are they looking? They're looking awful. My God. Little spritz in here. Shake it up, ooh ooh. Shake it up, baby. Dance all night. La di da. Let's put a little anal lube on here. Don't use this as anal lube, by the way, or your anus will uh, prolapse or something. I guess the theory with this stuff is you don't want to use too much because it'll get gummed up, but you don't want to use too little because then what's the point? So, now we can pop the hardware off one piece at a time. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do the, uh, I'm gonna do a clap, all right? I'm gonna clap my hands and the hardware will be replaced. That was actually really wild because as soon as I clapped a family of Wood goblins showed up and uh, changed the clips for me. And you may have heard earlier a conversation going on across the street. That was the landscaping guys talking about the Aldi supermarket. Wow, that one don't want to go in. Don't want to go in, don't want to come out. Maybe that's the wrong pin on the wrong side. How about this? That goes in, does this go in? There we go. I hate Aldi, Aldi Supermarket, but I like those guys because they actually apologize for interrupting my video even though they didn't really interrupt my video. What a nice group of dudes. So, the Screecher which is this thing, which screeches to let you know that your brake pad's worn out. 
Like, see how this works, right? When the brake pad material gets all worn down, then the screecher can make contact with the rotor, unless it's bent back like this one is, because I bent it back because I was tired of the screeching. All right. I guess these go in this way. There's something. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm really gonna have to put a warning at the beginning of this video. Cause don't, like if you think that I know what I'm doing. I kind of do, but I kind of don't. But I'm just trying to show you what it's really like to do this. Make sure you take your rubber band off. Because anybody could tell you like, oh, here's how you do brakes and whatnot, but once you get in there and start wrenching, that's when you'll see all kinds of little problems pop up. All right, a caliper thing. This isn't the caliper. This is the caliper bracket and the pads. And that's ready to reinsert. <laughs> Insert. Right now you can probably hear my neighbor's dog barking. Her name's and she's real pretty, but she barks all the time. Kind of sad, actually. Ugh. Gotta go get Z Hammer. Wow. I gotta show you all the crap on the ground now <laughs> dropping out of that rotor. Let's see if we can get some more to drop out. We uh, got our money's worth out of that rotor. Oh, really? Let's give ourselves a spritz. The new rotor, we've already wiped, but we'll wipe again. This thing. A little cleany cleanerson, a little spritz on the back to get rid of some of these crusties. This really is clean and smooth, but I just want to make sure that it's super clean and super smooth so that my brand new rotor doesn't start getting the high speed wobbles, which are no bueno. Oh, by the way, look at our jack in the background. Yeah, it's at full droop. Not supposed to be at full droop. I think we need a new jack. All right, I've got our bracketry. And I got one bolt. And I'm gonna have to do the boarding house reach over here and get the bolt in. All right, there's bolt number one. Oh, and I whacked the tripod. It's not that I don't care about making a quality video. It's just that I don't have the talent. So, you know what? You're going to have to accept this hackery. All 253 people that watch the thing. So now we can tighten these bolts to factory specifications.
I bet the audio sucks on this video too because I don't even have the microphone facing the right way. I'm like talking into the side of the thing and it's a unidirectional microphone. That's the torque spec in the Toyota manual. Is err. All right, got to stand up and apply. I might have overdid it there. Ooh, that's tight. All righty then. Let's put in our little pins, which I don't know what they do. I don't know what they do. They do something. I think you gotta have the pad straight for the pins to go in and stay in. Where'd that other pin go? Yeah, blooper reel, right? All right, there's your pins. This pin is really aggravating me right now. Don't pop out again, or I will. I will what? What can you do to discipline a freight pad pin? Nothing. <sighs> Nothing at all. I hope the camera's rolling right now. I really do. Is it? Oh, it totally is, yay. Yeah, should I put this in the car repair category or the humor category? I don't even think YouTube has categories anymore. All right. I think we're like almost, almost done. Now with this one, you don't really get a, a big grunt out of it. That's just uh, JTE torque spec, just tight enough. And uh, uh, that's it. Now we got to remount the wheel, which is not that hard because these are aluminum wheels. Easy to grab, easy to lift. Now we're gonna put our lug nuts on, finger tight to start. You can get, get the wheel in place. There's one. Would you stop it? Stop it or I'll tell your father. Now I am not nearly experienced enough with the Ugga Dugga gun, see, to actually try to torque them with the Ugga Dugga gun. So I'll torque them later with my uh, Craftsman torque wrench that's been carefully calibrated, yada yada yada. I wonder if I could write off the Ugga Dugga gun. I use it in my YouTube videos. I make 142 bucks a month on YouTube. So this is like a little over two months salary. Please follow the Amazon link and buy one of these so I can make $146 this month. Please, I'm begging you, please. All right, now that I'm totally frightened of this jack, because it doesn't seem to work, Let's use it to let the car down off the jack stands. Then we're gonna go shop for a, a new jack. I'm just kidding. I find these in the curb, on the curb, in the garbage. So, you know, if I get one or two uses out of them, 
they pay for themselves, right? All right, this time I'm jacking the frame rail so it don't have to go up as high. And I don't want to ruin the pinch weld, but it might be hard to get the jack out afterwards. Let's see. Now we're good. Now that the car's on the ground, I'll get my big Craftsman breaker bar and torque these things until they feel good to me. I think the Alga Dugga gun did a pretty good job, actually. But it's always good to check. Now we're on the driver's side again. Yeah, I didn't overly Ugga Dug these ones. So they need a little torque or... <coughs> torque of eating. <sighs> yeah, basically, if you have to grunt, you got it right. No. Don't take a disclaimer. Torque it to the correct specifications with a, with a torque wrench and stuff. You should also check your brake fluid. But chances are if it wasn't low before, it's not going to be low now. And it looks like somebody has topped mine off at some point because I'm actually a little bit tall on the brake fluid. How bad does that look? I mean, it doesn't look awful, but... Maybe we'll change that at some point too. So let's take personal post brake job inventory of all the crap that I have to put away. There's your parts box from Rock Auto. Tripod, jack and jack stand, parts bag. I guess we could put that in the garbage right now. Old rotor, Ugga Dugga gun. That thing is awesome. Fluorescent light that was totally useless. Works at night though. There's my sledgy sledgerson. There's your clamp. There's the bucket I was sitting on that you didn't see. Mostly empty can of a brake cleaner. A socket. More sockets. Wire cutters that I used to cut the wire that I used to hold the caliper up on the spring so it wouldn't fall. Ratchet, pry bar, old rotor number two. Paper toweling, rotor box. My trusty workbench, another jack stand, paper toweling, more brake lubricant, and now the most important part, get back in the car, start it up, and pump that brake pedal. Pump it! Pump it until you have a good pedal. Otherwise, you're gonna drive your car into your fence or into your neighbor's fence across the street. So that's it. We have finished our brake job. And uh, thanks for watching.